guys, so as many of you know, I just recently graduated from high school and I'll be attending college next year. And recently I've gotten a lot of questions regarding the application process and the decision making process and just my whole experience when it came to applying for college. So I thought I would just sit down today, answer some of those questions and just go over the whole process from start to finish and tell you my experience. So hopefully this will cover a bunch of your questions and um, just kind of give you a basic idea of what I went through and what the college process is like. However, if this doesn't answer questions, please leave them in the comments below. And what I'm thinking is I'm going to do a follow-up video with a couple of my friends, probably Daly and Maya. I haven't asked them. I'm now officially volunteering them, but I think that they'll be happy to do it. Where we just sit down and it can kind of be panel style and we'll go through and answer the questions that you guys have left in the comments. And that way you can get not only my opinion, but also a couple of others just because the process is different for everyone. So. Um, that's definitely something to keep an eye out for, so make sure you watch through this entire video to make sure that your question hasn't already been answered, but if it isn't, feel free to leave them in the comments below and we will be happy to answer those. So, without further ado, let's get started. What is this hair doing? So for me, the college process started way back in 7th grade because I went to a very college preparatory school and it's grades 7th through 12th, so the second you enter, they're kind of getting you on the college track, thinking about it, um, and things like that. But for most people, it'll start in ninth grade when your grades actually begin to count for your high school transcript. So that's where I'm going to start. In ninth and 10th grade, really just focus on taking classes that are going to challenge you, but at the same time, um, really working hard to get good grades in those courses. If your school offers APs, start taking those as soon as possible. My school requires you to take them, so I took my first one in 10th grade. I took AP World History, which was required, and then I took AP French, which um, isn't required but recommended. So I started out by taking those classes, and then junior year, you'll start Start taking standardized testing things like that always take AP tests when you can because often you can get credit for them in college if you want a whole high school survival video I'll address APs and everything there but just know that if you have AP or IB courses try to take those always challenge yourself because colleges are looking for you to take the hardest courses available in the sequence that your school offers and don't worry if you don't have those courses colleges also see that and they aren't going to count that against you because as long as you're challenging yourself within the curriculum of your school you're good to go so then junior year, you get to begin your SAT process, and um, there's also the ACT, but I took that once and hated it, so I was definitely an SAT person, not an ACT person. I took the SAT twice, and it was pretty consistent. Um, it only jumped 30 points super score, which, if you guys know the SAT, is not that much. If you want a video on SAT, stuff like that, I can do that as well, but it's just one of the many parts of the college experience, so make sure you're taking an SAT or an ACT because most schools you are applying to are going to require that you take that, and if you're taking the ACT, make sure you're taking it with writing. So yay standardized testing, um, I suffered my way through that all the way up into the beginning of my senior year. So that was a bummer. I did not like standardized testing. I'm not a big test taker as it is, and standardized testing was just long and tedious and stressful, but I got through it, and um, you will too. It's really, it's just one portion. Your grades and your extracurriculars and your essays are all components that come into play, not just your SAT score. So don't get bogged down on if you're not getting as high as you want to be or things like that. It's honestly just a part of your application, so focus on other parts that you have more control over. At the beginning of my junior year, along with beginning to prep for my standardized testing, I started to compile a list of schools that I was interested in. And when you take the SAT and you take the ACT and the AP tests, they will start putting your name down as someone who's interested in colleges and things like that, and you will start getting mail by the bucket load. It's insane. I seriously would come home every day with like five new letters from colleges just telling me about their school, things like that. So I started to compile these into a big fat binder of schools I was interested in. And um, I started to make a list um, of all the schools and their application deadlines and fees. As you can see, that went really well for me. I got really far. I got like three schools into it. Um, but. I started out with a list of what I believe is like 25 schools and for those of you who are like how in the world would you ever decide on those specific schools there are so many schools out there ah I'm so overwhelmed just take a breath and Google okay my college counselor would hate me for saying this but I love College Prowler 
it is like my best friend. It's so much fun, especially in the beginning when you're just kind of getting into the whole process and you're not that serious about, you know, the schools you're looking at necessarily. It's fun. It rates everything. It gives them letter grades, things like that, which is like, I don't know, it's just an easy, simple way of kind of comparing schools. Um, obviously, take each website with kind of a grain of salt. Um, some of the more credible sources like um, Fisk's Guide to Colleges, things like that, you know, you can pay a little bit more attention to. But with College Prowler, it rates these things. It'll even rate like guy and girl hotness and weather and things like that, food. Um, and it's just kind of a fun way to get excited about different schools and just kind of see what's out there. And so you can put in criteria on the website like the size of the school or the area, whether you want it to be urban or whether you want it to be um, kind of more in the wilderness, kind of just anything at all. So when I started, my criteria was I wanted a really big school, like 20,000, 50,000 kids. I wanted huge because I've gone to small schools all of my life and I was like, I want a change. I want a really big school. And I knew that I wanted it to be urban and that it had to have brick buildings. So that was my original criteria and I just looked at a bunch of schools and I knew I wanted to be on the East Coast. Or if I wasn't on the East Coast, the West Coast, but I kind of disregarded the middle of the country. Sorry. Um, and just looked at those. So that's how I compiled the list to start. And um, then the more I thought about it and the more I looked at what I wanted in a school, the more I realized that those weren't exactly the most important things, especially the big school aspect. Um, and I ended up deciding that I wanted a medium-sized school which is like five to 12,000. And it allows me to have smaller class sizes because if you're going to a really, really big university, it's gonna be a lot of large lectures just because the student to faculty ratio is gonna be a lot larger. So that's one thing to be really aware of when you're applying to schools is what you want your classroom environment to be like. For me personally, I realized that it was really important for me to have that smaller class size feel and to have connection with professors and really have more a one-on-one -on -one experience. So I downsized the size of the school by a lot and I think that was a really important step in narrowing down the school list. And, and I actually kept my brick building criteria because I, um, I don't know, there's something about the college experience that is just quintessentially brick building to me. So. I had those and then I added some more things like I knew I wanted to major in either journalism or um, international affairs or political science. So I started looking for schools that were good in those areas, um, even a little bit with broadcast journalism, stuff like that. Just so I kept my options open and I wanted to make sure that they had a major I was interested in because obviously you don't want to go to school and then realize that they don't offer your major. So just compile a list of things that you think you're interested in. And after that, I started to really make a list and narrow it down to schools that I was really, really interested in. So that's what I did the spring break of my junior year and then the summer before my senior year. And um, that was really, really helpful to visit schools. I, I can't necessarily tell you whether or not it's better to visit before you apply or after you're admitted. In some cases, I think it was really, really helpful visiting a campus because it really narrowed down my list. For example, I was in love with Tufts University. I thought it was going to be the perfect school for me. And I visited it, and I just didn't like it that much. And it's nothing against the school and honestly if you go back and watch because I did a follow me around of my college trip visits and I'll have those linked below if you want to go check them out um I kind of sounded excited when I was filming my um thoughts on it but the more I kind of reflected on it and the more I thought about the whole thing I just realized how underwhelmed I was and how I didn't feel that kind of aha feeling where you kind of just feel at home and at ease and um so, I don't know, it really helped, like there was that school and there was a couple other schools that I just visited and was totally grossed out by, the dorms were nasty, they smelled weird, or the people there just were not the kind of people I wanted to surround myself with, so it was really helpful to go and visit. But at the same time, it also made getting rejections that much more devastating, because if you could see yourself at a school and then you didn't get in, or um, as also happened to me, I didn't get enough financial aid. And ironically, the school I will be attending next year was one of the only schools I applied to that I hadn't visited. <laughs> so I visited after I was admitted and I completely fell in love with it. So it kind of goes either way. If you don't have the money to visit before 
you apply, that's fine. Just get all the information you can. Look for online tours. Check out my tours of colleges if you want. I did kind of follow me around and my thoughts on different schools. It'll be different for everyone. Take my thoughts with a grain of salt because I'm not you, but if you want to check those out, they're there. Um, learn all you can and then apply. And then once you've gotten in and you know what your options are, then go visit. <laughs> So once you have your list of schools you're going to apply to, then you need to actually start the application process. And the best time to do this is the start of your senior year. Um, that's when the common application will open up. That's when um, schools will start releasing their prompts, things like that. And all I can say is be proactive. Be as proactive as you possibly can be about doing your applications. I wish I could tell you that I was super proactive. I left almost every single application until the day before they were due. Um, and it was stressful. But at the same time, I'd been working on the applications up until that point without any success. And it wasn't until I had a hard, fast deadline that I had to meet that I produced anything of quality. So. If you know you're that kind of person, do as much as you can to prepare yourself. Do as many like brain dumps and free writes as you possibly can to get yourself prepared for that moment so you're not just like looking at the prompts for the first time the day before. Um, but honestly, every person's going to do it differently. As much as I wish I would have started earlier, it all worked out and um, I got everything in on time. There wasn't a deadline that I missed or anything. <laughs> write about something that you don't actually believe in. That was something that I struggled with a little bit because when you're given these prompts, sometimes you can see what they're looking for. You can see what they kind of are guiding you to write about. Or you have this preconceived idea of what they want to hear from you. And chances are they don't actually want to hear that. They just want to hear you. And they want to be able to know that what you're writing is genuine. And they'll be able to tell if it's not. Because good writing has passion and has a part of you in it and you're really invested in it and that's when you're gonna get quality writing that's gonna hook college admissions officers in so for example on Columbia's application they had you list a bunch of books you'd read and extracurricular activities you had done and cultural events you had been to blah 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 all this stuff and then they're like write about how one of these things has influenced you and right away I was like alright I need to sound smart I need to pick a book and I need to tell how that book has changed my life and the more I thought about it the more I was like have any of the books that I listed really changed my life? Like, really? And I realized that that wasn't where I was going to take this prompt because I didn't have anything to say. Sure, I read Dickens. Sure, I read Jane Austen. Yeah, I loved the books, but they didn't necessarily change my life. So instead I wrote about a cultural event, which was um, a Scandinavian heritage festival that I go to each year with my grandma. And I wrote about that instead, and I had so much more attachment to it, and it honestly kind of fit in with the whole kind of person that I was portraying to them, and the person that I am, which is someone who's really interested in cultures and in languages, and who's interested in studying different cultures and languages and writing about them and learning about them. And it's like when you find that piece that really speaks to who you are, the writing will come so easily. <laughs> There are two types of early applications, early decision and early action. Early decision is a binding agreement where you say, yes, if I get admitted to your school, I am coming here no matter what. And you can only apply early decision to one school. Then there's early action, which is non-binding. And essentially you just say, I'm really excited about the school. I want to hear back early, but I'm keeping my options open and I'm applying to a lot of other schools too. And you can apply early action to as many schools as you want to. And a lot of my friends applied early action to at least one, if not two or three schools. And they heard back in February, and I was waiting until April for my decision. So even if you're not completely in love with the school, sometimes it's nice just to have a safety or something that you applied to early action that you'll hear back from so you can be like, it's okay. Because even if I get rejected from all the other schools I applied to, I still have one that I can go to. So that's just some advice that I wish I had known. Um, and then it's just waiting for decisions. And um, all I can say is, just go into the whole thing with as open a mind as possible and 
try not to get your heart set on anything. I was completely head over heels in love with Brown and I got rejected and it sucked and I cried and um, when I got back all of my decisions I was kind of underwhelmed and I kind of went well okay I don't have a school that I really want to go to and a lot of that came from the fact that I didn't get enough financial aid and that's something that I didn't even think about my family can't afford to send me to a private school without a hefty scholarship and so when it came to getting back a lot of my acceptances I was all jazzed and I was super excited um, and then I got the financial aid packet and I didn't get enough money to be able to go to the school that I wanted to and while you can reapply for financial aid it's complicated and a lot of times you don't get any more money so when it came down to it I really didn't have any schools that I was that excited about and um, it was really frustrating because I felt like I tried to do everything right and I had done everything right I had gotten really good grades I had gotten good test scores I had put my heart and soul and months of my time into my essays and my applications and it just felt like how in the world is there nowhere that I'm excited to go to and then I visited the one school that I had not yet visited and it was perfect they had given me a huge scholarship and they given me a work study plan so I'm not comfortable saying what school I will be attending next year I know I've mentioned that it's on the East Coast but um, I am now at this time going to say that it's in Washington DC um, I may at some point tell you guys which school it is just cuz it's um, a biggish school I figured I would tell you guys I'm in DC just because you'll know from the area that I'm filming and when I'm in front of monuments and stuff like that um, you're probably gonna be like hey isn't that the capital uh, so I figured I would just tell you guys now that I'm gonna be in DC next year I'm so 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 excited and um, Honestly, the school is a better fit for me than Brown was. And it's funny that it was sitting there right under my nose. It was my last application to turn in. It was kind of a whim. One of my friends was applying and she was just kind of like telling me about it and it sounded interesting. And so I applied and um, yeah, I, I got in and I wasn't all that excited about it. And then I visited and I realized, unlike Brown, it was in a city. And unlike Brown, it had amazing, amazing programs for political science and international affairs. Brown has fine programs for that, but you can't beat the location of D.C. and the opportunity for internships and study abroad and everything like that. Everything about this school fits in with the criteria that I set out for wanting. And it was just funny that it was sitting right there and I wasn't excited about it because I hadn't visited. So I really encourage you to visit the schools that you've gotten into before you make your decision because you you're really not going to be able to know whether or not you like somewhere until you've been there. And just kind of to wrap up and to add a bit of perspective, I thought I would just remind you that not everyone gets the opportunity to go to college and that it's a really, really, really big privilege. And no matter where you're going, even if it wasn't the place you had your heart set on, to make the most of it because it's an amazing experience regardless. So I hope this was helpful. Please leave comments below asking any questions that you have that I didn't get to address in this video. I will be happy to do that follow-up video I talked about. Other than that, I will be doing dorm decorating videos coming up soon. I have some great DIYs coming up and yeah, I think that is about it. I will talk to you all later. Bye guys.